Oh, I want to live here. Oh, there it is. There it is. That blue thing. See it? That's a house, guys. That blue thing. Oh, there? Right there. It's right in front. It's a house or an apartment. This area was used as a starting point for the steamships. So we're talking about 40s, 50s. This crane is from 1958. It wasn't uh, used for many years. Come on. So we decided to make an apartment for four people. So it's a fully uh, equipped apartment with a living room and a kitchen. Nice bathroom and um, the two bedrooms. The top bedroom is in the old crane driver hut. This bedroom is really small, but I think it's all part of the experience because actually if you stay here, you feel a little bit like the crane driver that comes up to the stairs and climbs the ladder and opens this door and then you come to this actually amazing view where you have the possibility to stay for the whole day and look at the horizon to see the sunset over there. So there used to be a lot of cranes like, like this one on here. Actually, this building here was the storage from where they had all the trading goods. And the cranes would uh, be lined up here, transferring all the goods into the ships. There was a, a guy living here on the island. And he was looking at this crane for a long time and it was all old. And then he thought, it's just a pity for such big historical crane to have it demolished. And then he found us. We are a company, we're always looking at old buildings to transform to apartment uh, uh, hotels. So together with a couple of people, they bought this crane. And also the city of Amsterdam helped a lot in transforming this old crane into the new crane with an apartment hotel inside. We had the old crane driver, he still lives, I think he's about 89 years old. And we invited him to come over and we told him what we're gonna do. He showed us, this is the actually stairs to go up to if you're the crane driver. This opens up and behind here is just a little stairway. And then you come on the round on the first floor. But we obviously can't ask our guests to climb up this. So we made a, a staircase. And here you see the, the rollers. Uh, so the crane could turn 360 degrees. It could turn around. It's now fixed, so it cannot turn again. Why would it turn? The bow comes down this way, but you would need to turn the crane to pick the stuff up from the ship and put it on land. So people would wait here and that's where there was the waiting room for the passengers who were traveling all over the world. And many people left Holland to go to America or Canada. This actually would be the part where the machines were. So they would use this beam to hoist up the heavy machines because obviously after a couple of years of work they would have to refurbish the whole thing and put in new machines. So they would hoist it up and then would bring it all the way to here. And of course the machines are really big so they needed a big hole in the wall to bring it out. Now obviously we made a nice window with the view all over the, the eye. But you can see on the outside there are still the shutters that would close the, this hole. So we have a fully equipped kitchen, we have everything you can cook here. We have um, a fridge, an oven and a microwave. We have uh, boiling water coming out if you want. So it's plumbed all the way up. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Th that was not difficult. Of course it's difficult, but the most difficult part was to refurbish the whole crane. 
we had to remove it. So we had a company from the north of Holland. They came here with a big ponton and they would cut the crane in, I think, three parts and hoist it onto the ponton. And then bring it all the way to the north of Holland. And there they refurbished the whole thing. So most things of the interior was done there as well. If we look upstairs and uh, there we have a big bathtub. You can only get it in when the wall or the roof is, is off. So that's why we all did it there. And then we shipped the whole part back here. Did these stairs exist? No. Okay. No, they're pretty steep. Um, but that's also because uh, there's not a lot of space, but you still need to move a couple of meters up. Um, some original parts are being kept. The wooden ceiling and these beams are all original. And of, of course we had some challenges because you can see I'm pretty tall and the ceiling is already uh, pretty low and especially within the, the shower. We had some challenges in getting all the plumbing in, into the wall, but also that it feels com comfortable, right? Because uh, you see, I'm one meter 88 and uh, with the shower, it's, uh, it fits, it just fits. Uh, but much taller would be a problem, I guess. <laughs> because plumbing, getting plumbing down, you have just a, a tube that goes down, I mean, especially with the yeah. toilet, so you're dealing with waste. How yeah. do you Exactly, and uh, the walls are not very uh, thick, which means that sometimes you had some uh, trouble getting the plumbing in, because in winter it freezes, which means that the plumbing also needs to be isolated really well, otherwise it freezes. So we have a really nice and comfor comfortable bedroom here, uh, but the, actually the nicest bedroom uh, is one floor up and we go up. And that means we have to go outside. <laughs> and there's a little uh, ladder here. Uh, which was used uh, as for the, um, uh, by the crane driver to go up to his um, steering hut. So here we have a little terrace, which is really comfortable for, uh, for our guests. And I think this is the nicest bedroom of Amsterdam. This was actually the steering hut of the, the crane driver. So he would sit here. Uh, drive the crane, get the goods from the ship onto the land and, uh, and from the land onto the ship. He would see the people walking onto the ship. So we had a couple of interviews with him and he said, it's, the view is amazing and I really enjoyed my job. But sometimes it was also a bit um, lonely because in the days he didn't have a radio here. So he, his only communication was with the guy downstairs who would point him out what to do and, and where to pick up the goods. Of course you sleep here, but sometimes at night you need to go to the toilet. You have to go outside and downstairs. Yeah. Uh, so what we did, we made a little toilet here. We locked it away a little bit, so you can actually use it as a seat as well. Wow, so actually you have to be told there's a toilet there, you would not yeah. know. So, and that also prevents that you have to go down in the middle of the night. Maybe it rains, maybe it doesn't, but since there's a toilet over here, we had some plumbing which goes around here and goes down to get to the cabin below. I think this is part of the air conditioning. We made an air conditioning inside and it actually it blows on the side of the window. So the outside unit of the air conditioning is between the two cabins. And the back, so what's original here? Uh, the ceiling is original, uh -huh. so all this wood is original. And uh, of course this window is original. You just fit the, I mean it's small. Exactly. We just fit the bed and a little toilet and a little um, uh, hanging space for your clothes uh -huh. and your luggage. And that's it. We have a little um, television here. But I think not, not a lot of our guests use the television because the, the view is, is amazing already. It's quite scenic. I mean, I guess you needed to see a lot to be a crane operator as well, right? There's a reason for it. Exactly, yes. The crane itself looks very, on the outside, looks very industrial. But on the inside, the feeling is really calm and quiet. Especially when you stay here at night, it feels really quiet. Even though on, sometimes in winter, it can storm quite a lot. You know, the wind is blowing, you feel it a little, shaking a little bit. But uh, here you feel calm and relaxed. But even when on rainy days, you yeah. see clouds of rain coming uh, over the water, this uh, side, and then 
you're here in the middle of the rain in this little cabin and then the feeling is really also a little bit solitary like the crane driver but it feels really homey and comfortable you feel the crane shaking a little bit but still you feel secure When did this stop operating as a crane? So this part of Amsterdam was used a lot for the ship docks. And once the container trade, so the trade all over the world inside the containers picked up, actually this part of Amsterdam got a little bit run down because there was not a lot of trade for this crane. So I think it stopped operating in 1979. Sometimes a crane driver had to go all, all the way up to secure the, the lear, the cable. You can see it's cut here, but the cable would go through the roof onto a big roll where the, the cable would uh, roll out because obviously, obviously if you turn the bow uh, and the crane of course needs to pick up uh, things. And that was all inside the crane, so all inside the cabins. We feel a little bit obliged that we tell the story to the people who are staying here to keep the history uh, alive. So in every uh, apartment, you will also see pictures of the history uh, of that building. Mm -hmm. So we looked for old books about the history of this area. And so we found some, but these kind of steamboats would be in front of here. Is that a crane? That's a crane, yeah. It's not wow. this one, but... Right, right, but a crane, yeah. yeah. And steamboats like this would, uh, would dock up here. So these are some old parts um, we found in the, in the top room where the crane driver used to be. And actually these are, are the tools he used, some of the tools he used to operate the crane. We've been working on this project I think for seven or eight years. We've talked to a lot of people who used to work with this crane or even the people who were, are living or working around here. They are emotionally attached to this crane. So they were pretty sad that they saw that the crane was actually crumbling down. All the, the wooden structure was all rotten and actually you could point your finger right through the, uh, the wood. And then we talked to a lot of people who work here and live here and they were really happy that the crane was being redone. This was actually one of the outskirts of Amsterdam and they would demolish all, all the buildings in, I think, in the 80s. And some people worked really hard to keep this crane here as a, like a, a live, a, a visible thing of the, of the history of this part of Amsterdam. Like a landmark in a way, right? Exactly, yes. Yeah. Yeah. 